And then <laughs> there were two. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious me. The Melbourne Football Club are through to the AFL Grand Final. We spoke on Thursday and there was nerves just all through my body. I had faith that they could do it. I had all the respect in the world for the Cats and I know how good of a footy side they are. So all week I didn't want to count them out, but I thought the Melbourne Footy Club, if they brought their best, could get the job done. That was better than I could ever imagine. That performance was as good a performance as I've seen. It's the best demon performance I've ever seen in my life. It's the best demon win I've ever seen. I don't think I'm going to see a better win. Like, even if we do win the flag, I don't think it's going to be that emphatic. And I can't believe it. We've done it against the Cats as well, a team who touched us up for years. They've just made us look second rate for a long, long time. And even, even in the last couple of years where we're competing more with them, we still couldn't get that win. We fell short a lot of times. So the Max Gorn mark and goal against the Cats felt really significant. It felt like it just lifted the burden. It felt like it sort of got rid of some of the scars from the past in terms of 44 points down against Geelong at GMHBA and old Melbourne don't come back but this new Melbourne was born in the second half of that game and um, it feels like it's a bit of a new era, a bit of a new leaf. That third term by Maxi Gorn, as I said before, all my reactions will be in the Demon Fan Diaries, which will be out on the AFL channel today. But Maxi Gorn, what a performance. He lifted in that third term, and he's done it for years now. There's been multiple games over the last five or six years where I walk away from a cold MCG and go, geez, Maxi Gorn dragged us over the line. Jeez, Maxi Gorn got it, got it done. And uh, in particularly, when Stephen May went down in that first term, Max Gorn started sitting behind the play, and I, I felt this sort of reassurance. I, I thought to myself, well, Stephen May's out, but if Max Gorn's sitting in the hole, I feel like we can get through the game okay. So after Stephen May went down, I thought Max Gorn would be a defensive type Ruckman. But in the third, he went more forward than back. I don't reckon he went back at all. He just played forward. And some of the goals he was kicking were ridiculous. Slotting them from 55. Goals from the boundary line over his head. Big pack marks at critical times. That is one of the best prelim performances I can remember. I think Mason Cox is probably another one that I remember as like a massive prelim performance. So yeah, the big boys getting it done in the prelim. That was outstanding. The midfield grunt from the boys, uh, Clayton Oliver and Christian Petrarca was so impressive to watch. But someone I reckon has been a little bit underrated is Jack Viney. He was so critical in 2018. He came back just in time for the final series. I think he was carrying some injuries and he carried us through that final series. He loves finals football, the contested, the tough, the tough stuff. That's what he's, he's made for. That's what he's born for, Jack Viney. So the way he played on the weekend just typified his critical role. Like, we have a few midfielders, and if a Jack Viney went down, you feel like a Tom Sparrow and James Jordan can come in and cover. He's so underrated in terms of we don't have another Jack Viney in our team, someone who will just pull us over the line no matter what. It was an unbelievable performance, and oh boy, it's just, uh, it's crazy. I think Ben Brown as well, he's really starting to slot in well in this footy side. Uh, when he first came in, he was sort of kicking his two or three, but not really doing anything else, and then he went away back to the VFL. The team was criticised for dropping him for a long time. He went back, got fitter, got a bit of form, and now he's just playing like a genuine 200 centimetre key forward. It is phenomenal. His marking is so good at the minute. His goal kicking is great. And the one thing I think could be underrated from the weekend is watch how many times he's out of position and he gets the ball to ground. There was one in the second quarter where he brings it to ground and Spargo goals. And I reckon there's a handful of other times where Ben Brown was really, really critical in the contest without getting a stat. So that's all we need from a key forward. And I know this debate's raged on throughout the year. I feel like a Sammy Wiedemann does that really well. I think if you watch Sammy Wiedemann's highlights, he crashes the pack and brings the ball to ground and competes really, really well. So when Ben Brown came in mid-year, I was excited that we were getting a proven goal kicker and probably getting on the scoreboard a little bit more than Sammy. But I was a little bit disappointed that we lost that sort of uh, crash and bash forward. But at the minute, we've got the best of both worlds. He's getting on the scoreboard and he's bringing the ball to ground. It's it's great to see. From the weekend, um, our smalls were amazing. Cosy Pickett, Charlie Spargo, Neil Bullen. The goal that Neil Bullen kicks in that first term, that got me really emotional. And it's probably the only time I got emotional throughout the night because I know that there's one more game to go, so I'm bottling it all up. But when 
Ben Brown kicks long to Ed Langdon and Tom Sparrow. It spills the ground, and uh, Alex Neil Bullen picks up and check sides it from directly in front, and it goes through. That, I, I just got this sense of relief that here we go, we're on. The Cats had kicked the first, and they were and they were in front. And I reckon I reckon Alex Neil Bullen's goal was either the first for us or the second, but it really settled the nerves a little bit. It was like, oh, okay. Here we go. Um, let's get into it now. So, yeah, when Neil Bullen kicked it, I, I don't know. I felt really emotional. I felt it was a nice settler. It was just an amazing night. I just, it could not have gone any perfect. And I get the feeling, you know, fingers crossed, touch wood. I get the feeling that we hopefully get the chance to be in prelims in the future. And hopefully this isn't just a flash in the pan. So I get the feeling we'll be in these situations again and it it just won't go as good as that i don't think we'll ever be in a prelim again that goes as good as that so it was just so perfect and this team is set up so well to break the drought it is just we, we've never been in a better position and it's just flipped the sort of history and the sort of uh the culture on its head i remember thinking as a kid the melbourne footy club's been around for 150 years and i'm living in its worst existence ever and this is when i was just in high school and it's 2009, 2010, 2012, 2013. And I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking to myself, I could have been born in any other year, any other era, and uh, I would have seen some success. But I'm born in the worst period of the Melbourne Footy Club. And you fast forward 10 years from that sort of dark, dark patch, and I've seen the best Melbourne season in 57 years, even though we got one game to go. So it's, it's one of the most successful seasons my club has had in nearly 60 years so a part of me goes well yeah i did go through the worst patch but right now i'm living in the best patch in 60 years it's such a privilege we know there's one game to go we're very aware there's still one game to go and i feel like if you saw any interviews from the boys after the game they're very aware that the job's not done it is just so exciting you just feel like they've got everything right to have a real crack at this I'm so proud at the way they go about it. I'm so proud at the way they conduct themselves. I think from a from a culture point of view, it's I don't think the club's ever been in a better position. The way that they conduct themselves from little things like, you know, celebrating with uh, protein shakes getting poured over the debutante and track sort of pulling people up on that sort of behaviour and cleaning up, uh, I think it was maybe track or Christian Salem or Jake Lever cleaning up the mess on the ground. There's just a whole range of things that are coming out of the footy club that just seems so perfect. It's we're placed really, really well. And if it isn't this year, which fingers crossed for goodness sake, we hope it is. It just feels like this place is in a great spot for the next few years, no matter what. So super, super exciting, super, super proud of the boys. And yeah, Bring on the doggies. Bring on the doggies. Come on, boys.